worshiping the Lord in song. Even right now, you can just lift your hands and say, Lord, I just worship you. I just praise you. I just thank you. You know, one of the things this pandemic has taught us is that, you know, regardless of where we are, we're still the people of God. We can make, when, anywhere we are is his temple. Our bodies are his temple, but our homes is his temple. Your bathroom can be a temple. Praise God, a room can be a temple. Thank God we can worship God. You know, the scripture says, I will bless the Lord at all times. You know, that could say, I can bless the Lord anywhere. I will bless the Lord anywhere I am. Praise God, anywhere. So you can imagine in this time we've been able to, we could say, better dedicate our homes to the Lord in worship because that's where we've been most of this time. So we can worship God, right? Where you are just singing to the Lord, worshiping the Lord. You know, we're looking forward to getting back together again in maybe several weeks or so. But I'm telling you, thank God we can worship and bless the Lord at all times. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, I want to thank um, Pastor Colleen and uh, and Carla and Elizabeth for helping us to be able to produce these, you know, be on the air with you and just worship the Lord with you in this fashion. But of course, we're looking forward to getting together to see you face to face. You know, the, Paul said this, I, I long to be with you, to impart into you some spiritual gift to the end that you may be edified and established. So we're looking forward to that day and we continue to pray and, and lift that up and to thank God for what he's doing. Praying for those in government, those in leadership, those on the front lines, those in the medical and scientific arena, that God has given them breakthroughs even at this time. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So again, whether you're a first time visitor, praise God to this online service or you're a regular, we welcome you in the name of the Lord and we're so we really believe God's going to minister to you today. He's going to minister his living word and power in your life today. Now, I want to pick up on the series we started a few weeks ago um, entitled How to Get Through a Crisis. And we're going to look at some things there. And uh, we were looking at James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4, some real big keys that God's been giving to us. We've been kind of stuck on this area of faith, and it's so critical. And you're going to see again why it's so important. But we're going to shift into another key that you need to employ to get through this crisis. And so in um, the Amplified Bible, it says in James chapter 1, verse 2, Consider it nothing but joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you fall into various trials, tests, circumstances, crisis, be assured that the testing of your faith through experience produces endurance leading to spiritual maturity and inner peace and let endurance or, patient, or patience have its perfect result and do a thorough work so that you may be perfect and completely developed in your faith, lacking in nothing. And so, you know, one of the things I want to impress upon you again is this. We said this, that what is really under attack in a time of crisis, test, temptation, or trial? And James says it's your faith. And your faith is what's been put to work. You, we could say your faith is what's been tested. Your faith in your heavenly father. Your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Your faith in the living word. Your faith in the power of God. Your faith in the truth that as, as a new creation in Christ Jesus, you are an overcomer. So that's what, you know, so that's what's under attack, if you will. And what we focused on a lot last week, oh, we should say this. The Bible says in Romans 12, verse 2, and I referred to this last week, is that God has given to every man, that's every believer, the measure of faith. I just love that. So he's given you the measure of faith. You've, give, you've been given faith by God to overcome. And scripture says in 1 John, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So in a test, time of test and trial in studying this, I realized, you know, why, why would James then focus so much on faith? It's because he knows that is what's going to get them through the persecution, test, trial, and crisis. So he was getting them to focus on their faith and the power of that faith. And so I want to, um, last week I said to you this, that when he was speaking to them about their faith, he's obviously getting them to think about what this faith 
in God can do. So I want to review quick, quickly. I said to you, I made a, a, looked at a few references of what f- your faith in God can do. And we looked at Mark chapter 4, verse 35 to 41. Don't turn to it, but, and you can note it if you didn't note it last week. But it says, Jesus spoke to the winds and the waves. Remember, the boat was about to ob- be overtaken with water and drown them all. Now think about that. So a big sw- wind, a big storm came upon them to overwhelm that boat. Now Jesus, it says, was in the bottom part of the, of the, of the um, ship of the boat and he was asleep. Mm-hmm. Now, I think about water is coming, waves is beating that boat around. I mean, just beating it up. It's about to be filled up with water. And if you know if it gets filled up with water, it's gonna sink. Right. All the people would have been dead. That's now, they, they were panicking. They said, my God, what's going on here? They said, Jesus, Jesus, don't you? Jesus, look what's happening here. Jesus gets up, goes out to the, on, the boat, on the top of the boat at the end and says, peace, be still. Peace. He commands the winds and the waves. And they look at him and said, oh my God, this is, what kind of man is this? What kind of man? What kind of what kind of man is this? And it's amazing. Jesus doesn't respond to them the way we think he should, or the way they think. Jesus said to them, "Like what? You know, what's wrong with you? You little of you of little faith." In my language, I was like, "What's wrong with you people? Why did you wake me up?" Which means he was expecting them to do what. He did. Right. I mean, that's astounding, folks. Praise God. You see, the, the, so he was expecting them to release their faith and to use their words against that, those waves and sea. And obviously, he believed those waves and sea and winds would have obeyed their words. Right. Look at that. That's outstanding, folks. Don't know about that grabs you. Now, Mark chapter 5, we're told the woman with the issue of blood, she said, one translation says, she said and kept on saying, if I touch his garment, I shall be whole. And Jesus, when she gets healed, Jesus said to her, woman, your faith has made you whole. It's amazing because he didn't say your faith has made you healed because she got better than healing. She got wholeness. Everything she lost as a result of that illness came back into her life. So, it's, so her faith made her whole. So you see, she had her faith, I said last week, was a speaking faith. That's where many of us are missing, missing, including some of you might be listening to me, is that your faith isn't a speaking faith. It's a dumb faith. Amen. It's not being released in your words. And see, Jesus come in and said, your faith has made you whole. Praise God. Hallelujah. There was a woman in Matthew in Mark 7, verse 24 to 29. You should note that. Look into it. Study it out. Uh, this is a woman, and it says, her daughter had an unclean spirit. The woman, the daughter, I don't even believe was even with her. But you see, from a distance, now think about this. Jesus says to her, because of your words, go your way, your daughter is healed. Her words. Her words. She refused to be denied. Even when Jesus told her, because remember, Jesus was assigned to a certain region. He was assigned to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And even when he said, you know, I'm not called to the Gentiles right now. I'm telling you, look what he <laughs> said. She said, listen, even the, even the dogs get the benefit of the bread underneath the table. He said, because of your saying. See, her faith was released. She refused to be denied. Hallelujah, somebody. And then we talked about the, the, um, the uh, blind Bartimaeus. What did he say? Called out to Jesus, cried out to him. See, he was releasing his faith. Even when they said, shut up, he said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy upon me. What's he doing? Releasing his faith in the son of God. And then we looked at Mark chapter 11. Praise God, that faith, great faith chapter. Mark chapter 11, verse 12 to 14. Jesus comes to a fig tree and the fig tree was speaking to him because, well, in fact, I'm going to turn to that real quick. In Mark chapter 11, now in verse verse. Um, 12, excuse me. Now, Mark 11, 12. Now, the next day when they had come out from Bethany, he was hungry and seeing from thence afar off a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves for it was not the time of figs. Now, listen to this. In response, now that King James says, and Jesus answered and said to it, now, you don't answer something unless it's talking to you. That's right. Isn't that amazing? So it's amazing if we've got to pay attention to certain things Scripture says. It was speaking to Jesus. Mm-hmm. You're not going to get anything from me. <laughs> That's what it, so, so Jesus answered it. 
and says, let no one eat fruit from you forever. Mm-hmm. Now think about this now. Don't, worry, don't say, you know, poor tree. You've got to understand what was Jesus teaching us here because he goes into verse 20 and tells us why he did this and tells us it's an example. He wanted to show the power of faith. Yes. You understand? He answered it. Mm-hmm. Jesus answered it. What are you answering? That means we've got to be answering things, mm-hmm. which means their things are speaking to us constantly. Yeah. Your life is speaking to you. Your body is speaking to you. Your finances are speaking to you. Circumstances are speaking to you. Your job situation is speaking to you. Are you listening to me? Your neighbors might be speaking to you. Your job, your business is speaking to you. Things are speaking to you all the time. Now think about this. They're not necessarily loud vocal words, but oftentimes it's a picture. Oftentimes it's the circumstance, the situation. It's speaking to you. Jesus answered it. Jesus spoke to it. Now listen to this great scripture. Mark eleven twenty. 20. Now in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter remembering said to him, Rabbi, master, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered away. So within 24 hours. See, Jesus had some kind of faith. Listen to this, verse 22. So Jesus answered and said to them, Jesus is talking, listen, have faith in God or have the God kind of faith. And he tells us what it is. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, so it's a specific, this mountain, be removed or this problem or this situation or this sickness or this disease or this lack, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says, see, those things you say, What's not what somebody else says, but what you say will be done. He will have whatever he says. So don't you think it's amazing? The book of James, it's really, his name was really Jacob because there's no James in Greek and the Bible and the um, New Testament was written in Greek. And G- Jesus or Jacob was the um, half brother of Jesus. And it said that he accepted Jesus as his Lord after the resurrection of Jesus. Isn't it amazing he must have thought back growing up with the son of the living God and how God gave him revelation that his half-brother was actually the Messiah? Can you imagine that? And now can you imagine then him recalling then the faith of Jesus? Recognizing his ministry and three years of ministry and what he did and the words he spoke and the power he demonstrated. So what a witness we have here of James, this book of James, the half-brother of Jesus, converted to Jesus, recognizing his half-brother as his Lord and master. Can you imagine that? So his words have some weight to us today. His words have some weight to the body of Christ. Hallelujah. And so you can see here there's great faith that James is talking about and encouraging them in their faith. Again, every one of those examples, faith is emphasized faith your faith must have actions your faith in God must have a voice every one of those examples faith must not be silent your faith must not be dumb if it's a dumb faith it's not a working faith it's not a living faith it's not doing anything for you are you listening to me the woman of the issue of blood her faith was a speaking faith and it worked for her that woman with, an, with, a, with, a, with a daughter, with an unclean spirit, her faith was a speaking faith, and it worked for her. When Jesus saw the, the, um, the waves in the sea, he got up. What did he do? He released his faith. His faith was a speaking faith, and he told those disciples, and he was upset at them, and he, and he reprimanded them. Why? Because their faith was not speaking faith, which means they had faith to work against the situation, but they didn't use it. Glory to God. I'm here to encourage you today. You've got faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. Listen, when James was speaking about the faith of the believers in a time of test, trial, or crisis, he was talking about the active faith of Christ in the believer. You've got faith, folks. And I'm telling you, that faith, it's powerful enough to overcome any situation. In fact, the scripture says, in addition to Romans 12, verse 3, it says, by grace are you saved through faith, Not of yourself, but the gift of God, lest any man should boast. I'm telling you, you've got faith through grace. 
through the grace, the gifts, the goodness, the loving kindness, the compassion of God, when you receive Jesus as the Lord of your life, he gave you his very own faith. And that faith is powerful enough to remove any mountain, any obstacle, any situation in your life. Hallelujah. And turn your life around. Hallelujah. Glory to God. See, your faith in God and his word will take you through this time. So even in this pandemic, even in this situation that we're in, I'm telling you, your faith is God's going to take you through. But you've got to use your faith by using your words. You've got to, let me say it again. You've got to use your faith by using your words. You've got to have faith-filled words. Words which have God's life in them must continually be coming out of your mouth. In other words, where do we get faith from? God's word, which he's already spoken, which already has the life and the power of God. Those words must be inside of you. Those words must be coming out of your mouth consistently and constantly. Hallelujah. And we ended last week by you've got to be saying in the name of Jesus, this coronavirus, I, you will not, you will not invade my body. You will not touch my body. You've got the right to say it. In the name of Jesus, I will not contract coronavirus. I will not contract COVID-19 or any strain of it in the name of Jesus. And we said, you can say it every morning. Now, why do we say this? Or why can we say it with great boldness and with great authority? Because Psalms 91, 10 and 11 says, there shall no evil befall you. Neither shall any plague. Isn't coronavirus a plague? Well, it is right. It comes under that. Neither shall any plague come near your dwelling or your house. So you've got to say it. It's not good enough to know it. So you can have faith, but it's like having money. And, but you can starve to death if you don't use the money you have in your pocket. Are oh, you listening to what I'm saying? You can have money in, in your pocket and you're driving your car and it's on empty. How many know you're going to stay on empty? You're not going to go anywhere unless you go up to the gas station and get the gas in your car. So you can have something, but you don't, you're not using it. You won't get the benefit of it. God's saying, and James, James will tell him, listen, you've got the faith of God. And as you trust God, as you believe God, I'm telling you, that faith of God's going to take you through this situation. Your faith must be a speaking yeah. faith. That's why you've got to say it. Praise God. If fear is coming up on you, say, no, no, this coronavirus, no, it's not coming near here. Not near this house in the name of Jesus. It's not coming here. Not coming near my body. Hallelujah. Doesn't matter what happens around me. I, no, not here. Not in my family. Not in this house. Hallelujah. See, we, I went, we went farther than our own family. I said, in the name of Jesus, not one family. I take authority over that. You will not touch the families of Foundation for Life Family Church. We take authority over you. We bind you. We, for, we forbid you in the name of Jesus. I'm telling you, there's great power in the faith of Jesus. There's great power in the name of Jesus, in his blood, in his word. Faith. Hallelujah. So again, your faith is what's under attack. Your faith is what's been tested. Who and what you do, what you believe. Hallelujah. 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 So again, let me read this. It says in, in Romans, I said Romans 12 verse 3 tells us, every believer in Christ has been given a measure of faith. And again, it must be, this, listen, think about this now. This faith of God is in you. I was meditating upon this yesterday and I thought about it and just these thoughts came to my heart. You got to remember, this is God's faith. This is not just your faith. This is God's faith. Yes. Praise God. I tell you this, don't I mean, it's God's faith that's on the inside of you. God's very own faith implanted in you. Praise God. God's faith is in you. The same quality of faith that was in Jesus. That's why we refer to Ephesians 2, that it is by grace you've been saved through faith and that not of yourself. What's not of yourself? The grace not of yourself and the faith is not of yourself. It's a gift of God. God's put his very own faith on the inside of you. So you can say, I have the God kind of faith. Praise God. Think about it. God saying, will you believe me with the faith I've given to you? Amen. But again, it needs to be released. Amen. Now, when you understand that God put faith on the inside of you, so faith is a spiritual force. It is a power that comes from God on the inside of the believer. That's why Satan is afraid of you using your faith. Mm -hmm. He's really afraid of the believer. Are you listening to me? But the thing is this, if he can convince you, if he can get you full of fear, then what happens? You don't release your faith. You're not recognizing you have authority over the devil. You have authority over his works. You have authority, we could say, over persecution, tests, and trials. You can say, I'm going to get through this. You're going to say, when I get on the other side, I'm going to be better. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I want to touch on this. 
the trying of your faith, the next quality is this. So the big thing is faith. You got to remember the faith. But it says the trying of your faith works patience. The Passion Translation translates it endurance. So we could say there's a few words for this that really are synonymous. So there's, there's a endurance, there's patience, there's persistence, there's perseverance, there's long suffering. So all of those words here. But I want you to show, I want you to focus on something here to help you today. Praise God. You've got to endure. Now think about this, because I want you to make sure so you don't get the wrong understanding of endurance. Because a lot of times people think of endurance or long suffering. I just have to wait. Almost like what will be, will be. So it's a, it's a very passive action. But that's not what this is saying here. Now remember, we're talking about faith, but you've got to add to your faith an endurance. So endurance is an action word. Long suffering, perseverance, persistence is an action word. They are not passive words. You're using something. You're pressing through. Now it's interesting. Galatians 5 verse 22, it says, it says one of the fruits of the spirit is what? Patience mm -hmm. or endurance or persistence. Mm -hmm. In fact, in 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 5, it says add to your faith. And one of the things he add to your faith is what? Endurance persistence, patience. So you've got to add that to your faith. So now think about this. Through the exercise of your faith and patience, you're going to learn what your faith can do. So some of you, what's happened, because you've not used your faith, you're sitting back and th the life has overwhelmed you. Situation and circumstances overwhelm you. Why? You're just sitting back. Oh, I'm just being patient. Now, when, instead of using your faith, Keep speaking the word of God. Keep pressing through. Keep doing those complementary actions with your faith. So you've got to keep working. See, that's patience. You know, when I used to run track and we were training uh, as part of the track club we're part of to train for the 200 meters and the 400 meters, we would do repetitions. And so what would happen is this. We would do repetition 300 meters, repetition 150 meters. And what was that purpose for? That was to, to develop you, to get better and better. And what happens through the training, you realize what you could do. That's right. Now, sometimes it was strenuous. Sometimes some of the guys would throw up after a workout. I mean, because, you know, you were putting your body through what it wasn't used to. But the thing is this, as you stayed with it, you realized you could do more than you thought you could. And as a result of that, we, got, we all got fast. I eventually was part of a couple, you know, very top teams and won medals. But the thing is this, it came through what? Endurance, perseverance, developing what I have, developing what you have. You've got to develop your faith. So we could say endurance in a test, test persecution and trial is an opportunity to use your faith, to use your trust in God. Again, endurance, perseverance, long suffering, patience, those are not passive words. They are active. It's what you're doing with what you've been given so that you're not acting. Think about this now. You're not allowing your circumstances to dictate what you will do. You're using your faith in spite of the circumstances and through the action of your faith, you're going to get through this situation and you'll be stronger for it. But those who don't use their faith, what happened? They stay small. You're not progressing. You won't press through. You'll be passive. You will allow the circumstances to oppress you. So again, you've got to speak the word and continue to speak the word over your mind, over your body, over your family, over your, your finances, over your children. You got, regardless, you've got to speak the word of God, continue to believe God, and release your faith in his power regardless of what you see. Hallelujah, somebody. In fact, in Matthew 10, 22, it says, He that believeth to the end shall be saved. See that? He that, excuse me, he that endures to the end 
See, there's endurance. In, in doing what? Well, you've got to use what you've got and you're pressing through. He that endures, he that perseveres, he that persists. Praise God. He that holds fast, he that long suffers. In other words, you're continuing to, to press through regardless of what you see. Why? Because you know what you want. You're going through to victory. Hallelujah. I got to read a couple of notes I wrote down here as I was preparing this. Listen, endurance and patience builds a strength in your faith, allowing it to do more, to reach for more, and to stretch further. Endurance is not giving up. It's not giving up. So endurance is staying power, not giving up, not folding under pressure. See, that's what endurance is. That's what persistence is. That, no, you're saying, no, I'm not allowing my circumstances to stop me. I'm not allowing a no, a denial, a refusal to change my purpose and my destiny. If I know what God's called me to do, I'm going to do what he said. I'm going to expect the best. I'm going to continue to expect favor and blessing on my life, regardless of what doors close in front of me. Are you listening to what I'm saying? We're talking about faith here. Praise God. Now, just a few moments here. Think about this now. Faith has a voice. I've got to say it again. Faith has a voice, and it's a voice of victory. It's a voice of victory. In other words, before you, anything changes, you're speaking what God's word says about you. Why? Because it's faith in God. It is a belief in God. It is that you're persuaded in the goodness of God. Are you hearing me? Praise God. Hallelujah. Let me close. Listen. The devil's after your faith. That's what he's after. He's after your faith. He's, at, he's trying to get things. See, he wants to paint things so badly that you shut down your faith because he knows that your faith can change what you're seeing. He knows your faith can change what he puts up in front of you. Your faith can change the situation. Praise God. Hallelujah. Your faith can change your family. Your faith can change your body. Your faith can change your job. Your faith can change the kind of favor you have. I'm telling you, praise God. Hallelujah. So listen, he doesn't want you to use your faith, especially at this time. He wants you to get fearful. He wants you to be fearful. I told you about the fear that you feel in the atmosphere in our cities. See, that's the devil. He wants you to get so full of fear. You got to say no fear here. No fear here. Praise God. It's almost like a sign on your door. Think about when you leave your door, you should look outside your door, look back at your door, say, no fear here. Those of you with young children, you need to be telling them every day, no fear here. There's no fear here. I know what you hear on the news, but there's no fear here. Your children shouldn't be going out the house thinking, I'm going to connect this, correct this, I'm going to contract this fire. Tell them, no, no fear here. Amen. You tell them that loud and boldly, no fear here. And you tell them why, because the word says it. There shall no evil befall us, neither shall any plague come near our dwelling. And God's got this covenant. I say we can have what we say. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, he wants you to get so fearful that that fear gets inside your heart. And guess what? Gets into your mouth. And once you start releasing out of your mouth, then what happened? You set it in action. And there's very little that God can do. Praise God. Why? Because he's given you authority. He's given you, the believer, the power of faith. Why not say, praise God, Psalms 27 verse 1, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Praise God. Isn't that a good scripture? Why not say, praise God, Psalms 118, 17, I shall not die but live and declare the praises of God. Why not say what God says? Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, the scripture apply. Whatever situation, find scripture that covers what you need. Yes. What, what God has already said. What he's already said, his promises, thousands of promises in the scriptures, is already full of life. Amen. Full of the faith of God. Full of the power of God that cannot be resisted. Yes. I'm telling you, praise God. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. I'm telling you, God loves you. God cares about you. His word is powerful. Put the word of God in your mouth today. Declare the word of God today. 
Say the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack and I shall not want. Say the Lord, my God supplies all of my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Why not say the Lord surrounds me with favor like a shield and I find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. Why don't you turn to Deuteronomy 28 and declare what God's word says about you, that as the nation of God in the earth, as representatives of the kingdom of God in the earth, as the seed of Abraham who are blessed praise God with faithful Abraham hallelujah why don't you say praise God I am blessed of the Lord I'm blessed in my going out I'm blessed in my coming in whatever I put my hands to prospers increases and grows I'm only the head never the tail always at the top never at the bottom praise God why don't you say whatever I put my hands to prospers because it says it in Deuteronomy 28 verse 8 and 12 praise God that your land is blessed your cupboards are full that you are blessed of the Lord who made heaven and earth hallelujah and surely goodness and mercy follows you all the days of your life hallelujah so what is God looking for he's looking for faith coming out of your mouth what is the devil looking for he's looking for doubt and unbelief and fear coming out of your mouth so we can so you can you can listen so you can authorize him to work in your life and materialize what you're saying Praise God, I'm telling you, but the angels of God. Look at what the scripture says. I'm closing with this. Listen, the, the scripture says God has given his angels special charge concerning you. Praise God. Are they not ministering spirit sent forth to minister for those who are the heirs of salvation? Yeah. Looks like the angels are waiting on our words, yeah. waiting on your words, and your words of faith gets them busy. Hallelujah. Father, I pray for your people today. I thank you for the grace of God that is operating in their lives. I thank you for giving every person at the sound of my voice the spirit of wisdom and revelation that they see and they recognize who they really are in Christ. That they're not weaklings, they're strong new creations in Christ Jesus. And that the old is past and the new has come. I declare that anyone struggling under guilt and fear and condemnation, they rise up strong today under the authority of the word of God and the power of your spirit that they recognize and they know today that they are your workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which you before ordained that they should walk therein that they rise up strong strong in faith giving glory to God they take their place in the body of Christ they take their place in the earth as a citizen praise God of the kingdom of heaven praise God and they fulfill your plan and your purpose for their life let the weak say I'm strong Praise God. Let them let the weak say I'm strong. Let the weak say I'm strong today. Hallelujah. And I say they are strong in the Lord and the power of their might, of your might. Let them say I can do all things through Christ who strengthens them. Father, we thank you today. I thank you for your blessing upon every person, every home, every family today. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I speak life. I speak life now. Even that one laying down on that sick bed, I speak life. I speak life into their bodies that they rise up strong now. You rise up in the name of Jesus. You rise up in the name of the Lord Jesus. I say you receive strength now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I speak life. I declare the resurrection life of Jesus goes into that sick body now and repairs cyst sinews and organs and muscles and organs in the name of Jesus and resurrects that body, heals that body, heals organs and tissues now. Be made whole now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. I'm telling you again, you've got the faith of God. Your faith must have a voice. Give release to it every day, morning, noon, and night. Glory to God. I'm telling you, you're of the God kind. You speak to mountains. You speak to situations. Praise God. Double up on your speaking today. Hallelujah. And throughout this coming week, praise God. Let God know that you believe his word. And when you do so, let the devil know you don't believe anything that he says. Hallelujah. Jesus said, listen, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So I bless you today in the name of the Lord Jesus. You know, if you're here and you've never received Jesus as the Lord of your life, I want to encourage you. Praise God. What a great opportunity to receive Jesus. He loves you. He cares about you. What a price. Think about this. Why would God send his son to die a terrible death for you and I to bear our sins and bear our punishment in the, so that in the courts of heaven for eternity, 
praise God, we, could, we would never have to answer for our sins. Think about that. Why would he do that if he didn't love you? If he didn't care about you? What a great opportunity for you to receive Jesus as the Lord of your life. I'm going to pray for you. And I'm just going to lead you in a simple prayer. If you want to receive Jesus as the Lord of your life, just pray this prayer after me. Father in heaven, I receive Jesus. I confess Jesus is Lord. I'm asking you, Father, forgive me of all of my sins. And I thank you for cleansing me and washing me with the precious blood of your son. I call Jesus the Lord of my life. I will be his disciple and learn his ways and follow him all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you made the decision to live for Christ, not the first time or you're backslidden, you have not been living for him, and you'd like to speak to a pastor, then let us know. Give us a call, 416-614-1220. Put a line on the comment line in the, uh, whether it's in YouTube or in, on Facebook Live. Let us know. And we'll contact you and follow you so that you can, we can follow up and get some information into your, into your hands and help you in your walk with the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. We want to thank you for joining us today. Before we go, just a few announcements. If you, um, let us know how this message has blessed you. Let us know. You know, let us know by, again, sending us a, uh, a message a call. Let us know that this message has blessed you. We believe God has spoken to you as a minister to your life. Send us a testimony of God's goodness. If you've received healing for your body or some miracle, let us know because we want to rejoice and thank God with you. Please like our Facebook page, leave a comment as well as turn on your notifications. I want to remind those of you as part of the local Foundation for Life Family Church, don't forget Wednesday at 7.30, 7 o'clock p.m., excuse me, we have our prayer and the word. And at this time, I want to give um, the opportunity. We, we always are very grateful for those of you who, um, who give to the financial support of Foundation for Life Family Church and Foundation for Life Christian Ministries. We need and welcome your support. It's also an investment opportunity. And in fact, in Galatians chapter 6, verse uh, 7, verse 6, excuse me, it says, let those who are taught the word of God share all good things with the one who teaches. And listen to this. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Isn't that powerful? So God says, you know, as you're taught the word of God, as the word of God, in, in, let's say, transforms your life, as you are blessed and ministered to. So you've received the word of God today. So the Bible says, share, help, help the one who teaches you in all good things and contribute to their financial support. I love what God says. Listen, so this is an investment. Don't be deceived. What you sow that you will also reap. Praise God. Isn't that powerful? So whatever you sow, praise God, into this church, into this ministry, what's happening? God's going to use that supernaturally and he's going to multiply it back to you because that's what he says. Whatever man sows, that shall he also reap. Glory to God. And we encourage you. So if you'd like to give your, your tithes, offerings, gifts of love to Foundation for Life, you can send it by e-transfer to info at foundationforlife.ca. That's info at foundationforlife.ca. You can also donate through our website, www.foundationforlife.ca. And we believe God will truly bless and minister to your life. Hallelujah. Thank you for helping us to continue to spread the word of God online and globally and near and far. Praise God. Well, we bless you in the name of the Lord. We love you and thank God for you. And let's be strong in faith. Speak the word of God today. Speak the word of God tomorrow. Rise up, speak in God's word. Go to bed, speak in God's word. Amen. You've got faith and endure. Press through today and, let the, let, and see the victory and the victories of God materialize, materialize in your life. Well, until next time, God's richest and best be yours. Bless you. Praise God. Hallelujah.